This video will demonstrate the basic setup for sending Morse code over Skype using VoiceMeter. VoiceMeter is a donationware and it, it's uh, from VB Audio's products. We're going to be using a couple of his products, VoiceMeter and ASIO Bridge. And I'll go over that in just a minute. But the basic concept over Skype is we have three inputs and we have two outputs one so that we can hear it and this B channel is an output so that we can send it to the input of Skype which is where the microphone is heading and that's what this B channel is for so if you want to monitor everything like the microphone I've got a K1EL here and that's sending Morse code and I can hear that just fine and it's also going to the B channel which is connected to the input of Skype through this hi-fi cable. When you download ASIO Bridge, it installs two virtual sound cards, virtual audio cables, onto your computer system, the hi-fi cables. You'll want to make sure that all your sample rates are set to the same. Everything comes default at 44100. However, if you use another sample rate, I use 48K, then you'll need to go in here and change all of them. For both the playback and recording. And the same thing for the recording tab. We have voice meter here at 48k and on the playback same thing we want and same bit rate to 48k. Now what this ASIO bridge does is it connects Windows audio sound system to an ASIO sound system the new version of voice meter has its own ASIO driver now and when you use that as the device left click and you have to choose that choose voice meter this ASIO bridge also has eight channels to select from and what we're going to do is take the output of Skype and go to channels 3 and 4. So this is channels 1, 2, 3, 4, if you're following the mouse here, 5, 6, and 7, 8. So we want channels 1 and 2 coming in to this second tier. And I'll demonstrate. I've got another Skype on another computer sending audio. I'm going to turn my mic off so that it doesn't go out Skype and squash the incoming. But as you can see on the speakers, I have something coming in here. Let's take a listen to it. Then I'll show you on this virtual input that it's coming in, not the first column, but the second column. What that means is it won't go back out channel B. Channel B is the input. Sounds a little confusing, but it really isn't that bad. So I'm going to turn my mic off, and then we're going to listen to what the Morse code sounds like coming from the other computer. Okay, so as you saw, it was a second column. Now I'm going to play an audio file, and you'll see it. You'll see the uh, first column here light up. Stop! It's um, it's amazing. Well, there. So that's the first column. So I have desktop audio, and if you put your default playback device is the voice meter and this is the Windows version of this not the ASIO part but the w Windows audio version select that as a playback then it will come into the first two you'll be able to hear it with A selected it'll go out the virtual output here which in this case will be the ASIO bridge and the voice meter virtual ASIO which connects directly to these hi-fi cables so if it goes out It'll go into the hi-fi cable here, and the speakers will go out and connect to this ASIO bridge, which will send it to this ASIO routing bay, which will direct it to the three and four channels of this input, which will you'll be able to hear it if A is selected, which you just heard, and we'll listen to that one more time.
and I just have an audio file playing from a uh, news line on the other computer. Okay, so we have hardware inputs to choose from. I'm using WDM drivers for low latency here. So I have a USB microphone. Here I've got a Behringer USB microphone. Now I'm using two separate sound cards because on Windows you cannot select this both microphone and line in jacks on the same sound card. You have to choose one or the other. So if you use two different USB sound cards, then you have another input that you can use. Now if you had audio coming from your rig, you could put that into this line in jack. But I'm using the K1EL output. I'm going to a 1K to 8 ohm transformer. That 8 ohm side is going to a Hypermite CW filter, uh, uh, a hardware bandpass filter with that uh, they'll be in the show notes there. And that other side of the Hypermite is going to the input of the Behringer. And that's what it sounds like. And I also have on this ASIO driver here for a pedals. So here's the pedals. And you just go into the settings here and choose the ASIO driver voice meter virtual ASIO. That will give you the best sound and the best latency. There are many other drivers available but as far as Windows goes, the ASIO drivers usually have the best timing and accuracy as well as best sound and lowest latency. So I've selected that already. You probably have to hit apply. If you do, you have to close it and reboot the whole program. I'm also using a USB to serial port adapter and that's how I'm able to send it and does and I am be keen. So let's go into the ASIO driver that's in this virtual input. Now I could have selected the voice meter card, but that's not as accurate. So in other words, I could have selected a Windows driver, like right here, the WAS API voice meter driver, but I preferred the way this one behaved, the, voice, the ASIO voice meter. So that goes to the input number three. Let me put this up here a bit. It goes right into this input. If you have A selected, you'll be able to hear it. Whatever sound card you select here, and I'm using a real tech, again, a WDM driver for low latency. You can vary the volume. You can vary the bass mids and highs. And make sure you select if you want it to go to the input of Skype, make sure you have B selected. And then it'll go out that ASIO bridge to the Hi-Fi cables. And if you have Hi-Fi cables selected for both mic and speakers on Skype, then you're in good shape. But just remember, you don't want the output of Skype going back to the input of Skype. And the way to avoid that is use channels 3 and 4. And this is what it starts to look like and this is how you have to change it. So it, it'll come like this, but you don't want to use one and two, and that will be the output channels. That'll be the speaker outputs. It'll be on what it thinks is one and two, but you can, there's a little workaround here that VB Audio has put into this ASIO bridge, so you can slide that over to actual channels three and four. So you just right click, right click or left click okay so now we have those as blank so now the nothing is coming into the ASIO bridge so we're going to change this 3 and 4 to 1 and 2 right click right click okay now we got it let's double check yep okay so as you see that came in the second column and not the first column like you do with the media player there's one last one and one of the advantages is to having all this audio available is that on Skype you have your microphone, you've got a line in jack, you can take rig from your audio or from you know whatever other audio source you want. In my case I'm just using the K1EL. So we have a test here. Uh, and we're using the keyboard part. I've got paddles coming in to the voice meter input here. That's the input three. 
and all three of these are sending out the B channel which is the input of Skype that those are the main things you have to worry about I think that pretty much covers everything um, you can have up to 25 people I think in an audio conference on Skype so whether it's one or a bunch of friends you can gather together in a Skype conference call everybody can get this set up this way you can talk to each other if you want and you have several other options for audio someone has has recorded some some sort of a media file with Morse code um, you know of interest you can they can play it and everybody else can hear it if you set your uh, playback device to the voice meter card then anything you play on your computer will come to this input and then go back out B which is again to the ASIO bridge and to the hi-fi cables the settings on here you can adjust these buffers a little bit I'm setting it at 256 it comes default at 512 so you can if you get dropouts or pops and clicks and you may have to raise this but my system does pretty good on this and it does a really good job let me see if I can find that one right here 20 milliseconds near zero latency between between the time I hit the paddle handles before I actually hear the tone that is very good and in the professional music world that is considered near zero latency you will not notice a delay between tapping unless you are really good at concentrating but uh, really I there's basically I think for most people you won't notice any bit of difference between the way you normally key and using it this way and that's another good advantage to using that ASIO driver for EHOCW. Now this is one of the few that will actually accept voice meter at 48k I would try da 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 and I tried Morse code tools, uh, the Morse keyer, and you uh, you would probably have to use 44100 and it might work that way. But at 48k, this is the only one that worked for me. And it has very good stability, and I like having a keyboard too. So you can set the speed different on the keyboard, and you can have both paddles and keyboard going at the same time. If you don't like that, you can go to FL Digi and send that way. Again we're using the voice meter card MME to voice meter. That's just a normal Windows card. We don't have ASIO for FL Digi like we do for EHOCW so you have to use the normal Windows card which it still works pretty good. Yeah, It does a pretty good job. So you can hear it. The person on the other side of Skype can hear it and it works out pretty good. So if you haven't tried this, it's it's kind of fun. It's easy to download. You can try it out first. You don't have to pay for it right away. If you like it, feel free to donate to the VB Audio System uh, website and uh, see if you can make all this stuff even better than it already is. So I'm making a video using this mixer here because I have another VB Audio product called the Virtual his VB Audio virtual cable here. And that's how you're able to hear this audio and everything else that's audio related into this video. So if you're going to broadcast on YouTube or send it or stream it, you can use this A2 output. You can also use headphones here on A1 and you could use speaker output. I have a speakers, powered speakers right here I could use. Let's see if I can Okay, now I should be back on. So I showed the speakers. You may not have heard anything since I wasn't using that virtual card. And that's where the video is listening. All right, thanks for watching. Hope this helps and stirs up some interest. It's a lot of fun.